This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Sales of electric cars are growing strong in major markets around the world. The International Energy Agency says sales will shoot up 35% this year, hitting 14 million EVs. That represents 18% of the global passenger car market, up from only 4% just three years ago. And if things continue at this pace, EVs would account for about 50% of all passenger vehicles in about four years. The agency predicts that EVs will hit cost parity with ICE vehicles in about two years, and that EVs will cut global oil demand by 5 million barrels a day by the end of the decade. It looks like Stellantis decided it doesn't have time to wait to get ready for the transition to electric vehicles. It's going to offer buyouts to 3,500 UAW workers and wants to see them start leaving at the end of June. Interestingly, Stellantis did not announce this. It was reported on Facebook by the president of UAW Local 1264, which represents a Stellantis stamping plant in Sterling Heights, Michigan. The company will offer $50,000 buyouts to employees hired before 2007, and others will get an unspecified lump sum. Manufacturing EVs doesn't require as many jobs, so that may be one reason why Stellantis is offering the buyouts. Another reason is that it will start negotiating a new labor contract with the UAW this fall and it probably wanted this off the table. And social media is increasingly becoming the go-to way to make announcements. And yesterday on Twitter, Kyle Vogt, the CEO of GM Cruise, announced they are now operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week in San Francisco. Up till now, Cruise could only legally operate from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. Vogt says that their machine learning systems have proven their autonomous cars can work in San Francisco and that they're going to expand to other cities soon. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Lucid first hit the market with its sedan called the Air, but soon it's going to add an SUV to its lineup. They call it the Gravity, and it's undergoing final testing on public roads in the U.S. right now. Lucid didn't reveal any specifics about the car, but it did say it will seat up to seven people, have the driving dynamics of a sports car, and the longest electric range of any SUV on the market today. Now all the company needs to do is make sure it can build them in volume. It's still going through its own production hell with the air. And as one EV is entering the market, another is going away. GM will shut down production of the Bolt EV and EUV at the end of the year. The plant where the Bolt is made in Orion, Michigan, will get retooled to make the Chevrolet Silverado EV. And Fisker just got approval from European regulators for its ocean electric crossover, which means it can start delivering the EV to customers. The first deliveries will start on May 5th, and it's aiming to deliver all of its launch edition models by the end of September. Presumably, U.S. deliveries will follow Europe, but Fisker didn't give a specific time frame. Tesla is launching a pilot program in China to open its charging network to non-Tesla owners. It will include 10 supercharger stations and 120 destination charging locations, which will be available to 37 non-Tesla models. Tesla currently has 1,600 supercharger stations and more than 10,000 supercharger connectors in China. Tesla's profit margins took a hit due to recent price cuts. So by opening up its charging network to others, 
it will help generate more revenue and profits. And speaking of foreign automakers in China, Toyota's second BZ model, the BZ3, just went on sale. Like the BZ4X, it's based on the automaker's ETNGA platform. But unlike that model, the main drive system is Chinese. Car News China reports that it formed a partnership with BYD to use its blade battery and sourced its motors from a BYD subsidiary. The battery packs come in 50 and 65 kilowatt hours and provide up to 616 kilometers or 382 miles of range. And there's two electric motor outputs, the top one being 180 kilowatts or 241 horsepower. In China, the electric sedan sells for the equivalent of $24,500. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. BMW is introducing tech in the all-new 5 Series that will allow owners to control the car with their eyes. It will be available with level 2 hands-free driving that includes automatic lane changes. And if the driver looks at one of the outside mirrors and traffic is clear, the car will change lanes to that side. The system works up to 85 miles an hour or 130 kilometers an hour, and the turn signal can activate auto lane changes as well as eye control. BMW also revealed a few other details about the all new 5 Series that premieres in quote, just a couple of weeks, like that it will include ICE, plug-in hybrid, and pure electric powertrains. Because of that, the chassis tuning is model specific and features a new control system for electronic dampers on the i5 BEV. That model will come standard with a heat pump that supplies the drive system, battery, and interior, and BMW says it paves the way for more rapid charging. Speaking of new luxury sedans, Mercedes revealed the all-new E-Class. Styling is not a radical departure from the current car, but you'll notice plenty of new design accents, including around the grille, and we especially like how the Mercedes three-pointed star is picked up in the rear taillights. One thing that might only be picked up by current owners is a longer wheelbase because it provides more trunk and rear seat leg room. And the interior of the new E-Class is like a mix of the EQE and EQE SUV. It has the upright digital driver's cluster like the EQE and the center and passenger display under one piece of glass that covers the rest of the dash is like the EQE SUV. Perhaps one of the biggest changes is a new electronic architecture that Mercedes says is more software based, which means among other things, the car will have more OTA capabilities. Depending on the market, the E-Class is available with gas, which are all mild hybrids, diesel, and plug-in hybrids, as well as rear and all-wheel drive. But no matter what, they're all paired with a 9-speed automatic transmission. Other highlights include level 2 hands-free capability, an available air suspension system, and rear-wheel steering. The new E-Class will be on sale before the end of the year. Silicon carbide chips are a hot commodity because they can make electric vehicles even more efficient. So Bosch is buying an American chip company, TSI Semiconductors, which is based in California. It will start making silicon carbide chips in 2026. Bosch plans to invest $1.5 billion at the site, but it says it will be heavily dependent on receiving federal funds through the Chips and Science Act, as well as incentives from California. And that brings us to the end of this show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day.
Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.